just to start off with, we can't ignore the amazing location we're in. We're literally in the vault right now That's where the Hatton Garden job took place. Mm. Something about being in here brings home the audacity of the job, like the sheer cheek of what they've done right next to the hole that was drilled through the wall that they climbed through. Was that part of the appeal for both of you in telling the story, that kind of old fashioned, just balls? <laughs> Well, I mean, from my perspective, it's, you know, it is a very old fashioned style of, of, of robbery. You know, um, these types of things did go on, maybe not quite as big as this robbery, but they did go on a lot more in the 70s and 80s. <clears throat> so crimes moved on. So when this when this actually happens, like, oh, wow, there's there's been, you know, been a, a, a large sort of old fashioned robbery that's taken place. And when we found out it was a group of, of, of older guys, it was just unbelievable i mean you know it was a physical feat that what they did it was it was quite a a, a a remarkable thing to pull off and yeah there was a lot of audacity and cheek involved and it, you know that's what kind of drew me to it you know and i i heard that you particularly phil had literally read about the story and thought there's a part for me in there well, somewhere yeah, i saw i love all that sort of stuff you know i watch all murder and crime on the tv and you know when i saw you know that I saw that the robbery on the TV, I thought, I, I reckon I, I could be in this one day. And all of a sudden I was. So it was great, you know. And it's the audacity that they're all senior citizens that makes it, you know, it, it more interesting that they're old school and there is still old school in villainy, you know. There's still the old boys still going out there and doing a good job, nearly doing a good job. <laughs> and that's a very British thing, isn't it? That kind of... Almost getting there, but not quite hitting not the point. quite doing it. And yeah. I think, although there's obviously been valid comparisons to Ocean's Eleven, there's something of the, the full Monty brassed off kind of poignancy to it, like that sense of having one last shot. And I wonder if that came across to you both through the story. Well, absolutely for me, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> when, I, when I first read about it, I, you know, I, I had a real dry smile come across my face because it was just, it was this, they pulled off this job, then got caught so soon after it. And... You know, I had, I had kind of an affinity to the story because my, my dad is, um, he was 83 years old, Londoner, passed away a couple of years ago. And they, the whole thing just reminded me of my dad in a weird way. You know, he's not, he, but, you know, not that I know of that, he, you know, he wasn't a career criminal, but the, the, the whole kind of, I guess, romance to it all just reminded me of this kind of London British spirit. Very old fashioned and very, very kind of cool, really. You know, like as Phil said, I, I really like this kind of stuff, you know. And that, that very much come across, particularly with your character, Phil, and some of the some of the other guys, you know, Larry's read, it was very... There was a sense of deja vu there for me, like sitting in the pub when I was young, listening to my uncles and their banter and their storytelling and stuff. And you guys, I wonder, with the chaps behind the story, behind bars, obviously you had some facts to jump off of and you, you did your research, but when did he come alive for you? Like, at what point did you find your... Danny and managed to take him into the story yourself. Well, when I found out that he was a kind of bit of a fitness fanatic, and you know he did a few stranger things like slept on the floor in a sleeping bag, you know, and he was into the army training and stuff, and wore a fez occasionally. Um, that gives you a kind of nice, you know, abstract kind of thing to just to grab onto. Whereas you know, otherwise, you know they. People can play all villains the same, can't they? But that was that's what was really nice about Danny. And, and that he, you know, was a fixer and could get people together and uh, sort the job out. And you had those interactions together, you know, sitting in the pub. There's the lovely comparison with the next generation kind of coming forward and the way you guys were with each other. That felt very authentic i know some of you have crossed paths before some yeah of we're cars. all old, you know we're all in, in our business we, we all know each other a bit so but what what i always think is you know they might be old boys doing it but they wouldn't think they were old they wouldn't think they were past it they would you know they would just think this is another job and i'm doing another job you know mm. and i think you know if they hadn't got caught another job came up that was similar they'd do it again that's yeah that's that, that exactly right they 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 see themselves that's the lot that's their line of work i mean you could say that about our business you look at some of the directors that are still still going strong now you know martin scorsese the you know the films he's 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 currently working on and, and has done in the last five years i'm sure he doesn't consider himself old either you know but it is you know back to these guys it was it was just a job that 
that, that came up and they pulled it off. Yeah. And until illness they did, did befall them, yeah. you know, and things did go wrong and they had to, you know, it took them a whole weekend yeah. to do it. <laughs> yeah, and we're coming up to the anniversary, aren't we? Easter weekend is literally the, yeah. the anniversary of the job. I wonder, you both know London quite well. I mean, the film is, is a, it's a real celebration of old London, you know, even down to a scene at the Berlin ground and that feeling of the faces and the places that are maybe starting to gradually vanish. I wonder if you both this Easter weekend in time for opening could take a crew and break into anywhere for a nose about, not necessarily for profit. Mm -hmm. Where would each of you choose to go? I'd probably just go to the local boozer for, for, for a sneaky sneaky couple of pints before it opened myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, as you said, look, it, it is a, it's kind of a celebration of like old London and whatnot, you know, and I'm glad you picked up on that because that's what we intended to do was to make a, a movie in that tone, you know. And where would you head to, Phil, if you could take a crew and break in anywhere this oh, Easter I weekend? Wouldn't, I wouldn't break into anywhere. Just for a nose about, somewhere you'd love to I'd explore. I'd like to, oh, I don't know, probably one of the, uh, one of the art galleries. Well, if you had some really nice old modern art, I'd like to go down there on my own and then take a bit with me. Sit down and absorb a bit of culture. Absorb a bit and then take some. <laughs> Cool. Take some home for an Easter present. <laughs> Lovely, that's a beautiful place to end. <laughs> Thank, Thank you both ever so much. Thanks Good luck with the opening. Thank Cheers. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.